2023 will be a revolutionary year for China's shipbuilding industry. As China about to delivers its first domestically built large cruise ship, the H1508, which is a breakthrough in the century-long monopoly of European shipbuilding companies. Large cruise ships are among the most valuable and complex engineering vessels in the world shipbuilding industry due to their high technological content and great construction difficulty. China's domestically built cruise ships are over 340 meters in length, with a tonnage of over 140,000 tons and a component count of over 25 million, which is 250 times that of an ordinary car, 10 times that of a high-speed train, and over five times that of an airplane. If a country can master the construction technology of large cruise ships, it can cultivate countless shipbuilding engineers, reflecting the shipbuilding industry and overall technological level of the country. In the past, Europe held the technology for constructing large cruise ships, with the four major shipbuilding groups in Europe occupying 95% of the market share. However, China has achieved a breakthrough and is currently building two large cruise ships simultaneously, with one expected to be delivered this year. What is the difficulty in building large cruise ship? Why did China come from behind and achieve what Japan and South Korea failed to do? China's shipbuilding industry for cruise ships started relatively late compared to Europe, with the world-famous Titanic beginning construction in 1909, when China was still under the Qing dynasty. It took until 2006 for Costa Cruises to open the first international cruise route with a Chinese port as the home port in Shanghai, which finally achieved a breakthrough for China's cruise tourism. However, due to the late start, China's cruise ship manufacturing industry lags behind the world's advanced level by more than 100 years with a significant technology gap. Over the past 100 years, the global shipbuilding industry chain has undergone multiple transfers, with Japan surpassing Europe in the 1970s, and Japan and South Korea jointly dominating the industry in the 1990s. In the past decade, China's shipbuilding industry has risen, and currently, China, Japan, and South Korea occupy 90% of the global shipbuilding industry. Nonetheless, European shipbuilding companies still occupy over 95% of the market share in the large cruise ship sub-market. The construction of large cruise ships is particularly challenging, as they consist of thousands of cabins, each with unique facilities and layouts, making their design, construction, and interior decoration incredibly complex. Is it really that difficult to build large cruise ships? Why couldn't China, Japan, and South Korea overcome this technology? The answer is, yes, it is indeed very difficult. Conventional ships have a simple structure, mainly composed of storage rooms, crew rest areas, and so on. However, large cruise ships, as entertainment vessels, have thousands of cabins, including restaurants, guest rooms, theaters, music halls, swimming pools, and more. Each cabin has a different layout and facilities, and it can be said that a large cruise ship is a small sea city. Therefore, the design, construction, and later decoration of large cruise ships are very complex. Japanese companies have made multiple attempts to enter the large cruise ship market. In 2002, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries undertook the construction of the Carnival Diamond Princess, marking its first venture into the cruise ship industry. Emechi is one of the world's largest shipbuilder, with a strong manufacturing background in various industries, including aircraft pots, high-speed trains, and ships. However, during the construction of the Diamond Princess, a fire caused by an engineering accident broke out, burning for 19 hours before being extinguished and resulting in heavy losses for MHI. Eventually, they delayed the completion of the ship by one year and announced that they would no longer build cruise ships. In 2011, MHI made another attempt to enter the large cruise ship manufacturing industry. At that time, Aida Cruises was planning to expand its business, and MHI actively participated in the bidding for the cruise ship manufacturing contract. However, Due to the previous cruise ship fire accident, Aida Cruises was not willing to let Timei Chai undertake the project. 
In order to win the contract, MHI made many promises, the most important of which were the timeline commitment and the clause on a huge penalty for breach of contract. Specifically, MHI promised to complete the first ship within 23 months or pay a huge penalty to Aida Cruises every day. MHI was confident in making this commitment because they believed they had gained rich experience from previous setbacks in the cruise ship manufacturing process and had the ability and strength to make a comeback. Finally, with these promises, Aida Cruises placed an order for two ships with MHI. Unfortunately, history repeated itself. MHI encountered design challenges, followed by another fire during construction, and finally the finishing work failed to meet the European shipowner's standards. It took a full four years to complete the construction of the cruise ship. In the end, the ship's construction cost amounted to $2.3 billion, while the contract price for the ship was only $800 million. Besides construction costs, MHI had to pay a significant amount of liquidated damages to the ship owner, resulting in a loss of nearly $2 billion for MHI. This deal was a super big loss for MHI. As a result, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries once again announced its withdrawal from large cruise ship projects. Why is it so difficult for even powerful shipbuilding companies like Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to build large cruise ships? They not only struggle to meet manufacturing deadlines, but also get in a fire during the manufacturing process. Firstly, it is due to the difficulty of the design. The design of a large cruise ship is incredibly challenging, equivalent to designing a small city from scratch. For example, the design drawings for a 100,000-ton cruise ship comprise over 60,000 sheets of paper with thousands of cabins, which can be divided into hundreds of different systems and subsystems. Connecting all these cabins and systems requires over 5,000 kilometers of cable equivalent to the distance between London and New York. Therefore, a well-planned design is essential to ensure that the cabins and systems do not interfere with each other and provide a comfortable experience for passengers. In addition, as a combination of a ship, hotel, and amusement park, a large cruise ship must meet the needs of travelers from around the world, requiring high standards for interior decoration, furniture selection, and layout. Shipyards must design and decorate thousands of rooms with different functions, making the design volume even larger than that of a large hotel. Moreover, there are stringent design requirements for safety, comfort, and entertainment, among others. Safety, in particular, is of utmost importance as a cruise ship travels on the open sea, and external rescue can be incredibly challenging in the event of an accident. Consequently, Designing a large cruise ship is arduous and complicated, requiring tens of thousands of design drawings. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries made the mistake of underestimating the difficulty of designing a cruise ship and choosing an independent design approach. As a result of their lack of knowledge about cruise ship facilities and unfamiliarity with the design review process, the expected one-year design cycle took them three years to complete all the design drawings. The second difficulty lies in the construction of cruise ships. In 2013, MHI started building large cruise ships, but encountered many problems during construction. First, they underestimated the difficulty of building a cruise ship. Unlike cargo ships, cruise ships have many narrow cabins, making it difficult for workers to operate during construction, and some equipment for transportation is also limited by space. To reduce the difficulty, MHI chose to first build the ship's structural frame and then install the equipment inside. However, this method is not feasible for cruise ships uh, and directly affects the construction speed. In addition to the construction method, overall planning is also a problem. With the number of pots on a cruise ship reaching tens of millions, it is easy to make mistakes. During material installation, MHI made mistakes and omissions, resulting in some pots having to be reinstalled which slowed down the construction progress. The third issue is about materials. The requirements for large cruise ships are very strict, so the selection of materials is very cautious. However, the more stringent the requirements for materials, the more difficult they are to install and transport. For example, the upper structure of the cruise ship 
uses a large number of special thin plate designs. These thin plates have high strength but are very thin, even up to 4 millimeters. This design was originally intended to reduce the weight of the upper deck of the cruise ship, but this material is particularly prone to defamation and serious damage during handling and installation, which leads to slow construction progress. The fourth issue is equipment. Traditional European cruise ships have 90% of their equipment supplied by European suppliers. However, because Japan has never been involved in the construction of large cruise ships, the number of equipment suppliers in Japan is very limited, and global procurement is necessary, which takes a lot of time. The fifth issue is about decoration. As a form of entertainment, the decoration and design styles on a cruise ship need to be diverse. As Zaida Cruises mainly targets European tourists, a large number of European-style designs and decorations are required. However, Japan does not have many companies specializing in this type of decoration, so global procurement and bidding are necessary. To solve this problem, MHI first proposed to the ship owner to use their expertise in Japanese-style decoration on a larger scale to reduce decoration costs, but this was rejected by European ship owners. Forced to adopt a European-style decoration, MHI still chose Japanese construction and decoration companies to assist in the decoration of public areas on the ship. These Japanese suppliers have no experience in shipbuilding, are not familiar with drawings, processes, and safety regulations, resulting in construction delays and decoration effects that are not recognized by the ship owner. There are many flammable items on a cruise ship, and the number of workers is large and complex. A Mei management team lacks sufficient professionalism resulting in cardboard and insulation materials being accidentally ignited again, causing the under-construction cruise ship to be attacked by fire again, and causing further delays in construction. MHI faced difficulties at every turn and had to seek help from European suppliers to complete this unprofitable deal as soon as possible. After three delays, MHI finally delivered the first large cruise ship in 2016 which cost $2.3 billion to build. They also had to pay a huge penalty to the ship owner for breach of contract. However, the contract for this ship was only worth $800 million, which means that MHI lost nearly $2 billion and also caused significant negative impact on its reputation. If we consider the dockyard resources, worker capacity, and other factors occupied by these two cruise ships in the past four years, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries' actual losses in this deal may be even greater than $2 billion. Therefore, after this, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries announced that it would no longer accept orders for large cruise ships weighing more than 100,000 tons, completely withdrawing from this industry. Now, everyone knows how difficult it is to build a cruise ship. It requires technology, a team, a supply chain, and a market. It is not something that can be accomplished simply by accumulating enough technology. Mitsubishi underestimated the hidden requirements in the process of manufacturing a cruise ship and suffered a great loss. South Korea has invested in the large cruise ship building industry, following in the footsteps of Japan. However, their approach differs from Japan's independent research and development strategy. Koreans prefer to acquire technology through acquisitions, taking a shortcut to success. In 2008, Ackeryards was facing bankruptcy, and South Korean shipbuilding giant STX Group seized the opportunity to acquire Acker and rebranded it as STX Finland, officially marking their entry into the cruise shipbuilding industry. The following year, STX Group also acquired the French shipyard Chantiers L'Atlantic and renamed it STX France. Having acquired two of the four major cruise shipbuilders in Europe, it seems that South Koreans is in a winning position. With a few more years, they can gradually transfer cruise ship building technology to their own shipyards. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned. After completing the two acquisitions, the global economic situation worsened, and both the international shipping industry and tourism industry suffered severe downturns. Consequently, STX Korea Group and the two cruise ship building companies it acquired suffered significant losses. STX Finland was hit particularly hard, 
losing $1 billion within five years and becoming a liability. Eventually, STX had to sell all of its shares in the shipbuilding enterprise for $128 million, losing $900 million. Similarly, STX France experienced losses and was put up for sale. However, despite three auctions, there were no takers, and the shipyard was eventually sold to their Italian competitor, Fincantieri Group, for only $74 million. In the end, the Korean acquisition strategy failed. Today, manufacturing has become a key project for all countries. Koreans can no longer rely on acquisitions like before. Therefore, it can be said that Koreans' dream of building cruise ships has also been shattered. After the failures of South Korea and Japan, why did China enter the large cruise ship building industry? The answer is simple. The industry has a very promising future. In addition to improving the overall level of shipbuilding, it can also create huge profits. Large cruise ships themselves are the most value-added and profitable products in shipbuilding. For the same tonnage, the cost of a large cruise ship is over $1 billion, while the cost of a bulk carrier is less than $100 million, a difference of about 10 times. By undertaking large cruise ships, Chinese shipyards can create more profits. In addition, the market for large cruise ships in China is also very large. In 2006, China had just begun to explore large cruise ships, and the number of tourists grew at a high rate of around 50% per year. By 2017, China had surpassed Europe to become the world's second largest cruise ship market, second only to the United States. Therefore, China attaches great importance to the development of large cruise ships. According to predictions by Chinese government agencies, by 2035, China's annual cruise market will reach a scale of 14 million people, becoming the world's largest cruise travel market. Major global cruise companies are also targeting China, intending to make it their main target for business growth. However, with such a large piece of cake, how could Chinese companies give it up to others? During this period, China has introduced many policies to support the country's cruise industry. Mastering the construction technology of large cruise ships is a key step for China to seize the large cruise market. In 2018, China Shipbuilding signed agreements with Carnival Corporation of the United States and Fincantieri of Italy to build large cruise ships for them, respectively. In 2019, the first large cruise ship manufactured in China began construction at the Waigakiao Shipyard in Shanghai. With a total length of 323.6 meters, equivalent to a 16-story entertainment city, it can accommodate up to 5,246 passengers and is a real ocean giant. Then, the construction of the second cruise ship began in August 2022. Why can Chinese companies start building two cruise ships at the same time, while Japanese companies are struggling to build one? This is actually related to the tradition of Chinese manufacturing. For technological breakthroughs, China has developed a complete apprenticeship-based approach to gradually absorb and digest, and then innovate, which has proven effective. This is also true for large cruise ships. China did not buy European shipyards like South Korea did, nor did they blindly choose to work independently like the Japanese. Instead, they formed a joint venture with Italy's Fincantieri Group, with the two holding 60% and 40% of the shares respectively. Through this intermediary, they obtained the technology license and design drawings for the Vista-class cruise ship, and also entered into a consulting business agreement with Fincantieri Group, allowing them to gain valuable shipbuilding experience and guidance from this century-old shipyard. During the construction process, China not only focuses on learning and integrating imported technology, but also pays attention to familiarizing itself with the entire construction process, with the aim of establishing its own construction system. In terms of design, China has compiled 49 technical documents into 57 overall technical construction plans and 47 technical drawings, forming a complete set of design processes for domestically produced cruise ships. Regarding suppliers, China did not blindly adopt domestic equipment and accessories, but instead cooperated with international teams. The total number of suppliers is about 500, with domestic suppliers accounting for about 
While China's domestic teams are also highly skilled in interior decoration, catering, and water and electricity engineering, Chinese shipyards did not abandon foreign teams, but instead entrusted 60% of the project to international teams. On construction safety issues, Chinese companies are very cautious, strictly following international requirements and the construction standards of the Fincantieri Group. Ultimately, China successfully built its first large cruise ship in just three years, demonstrating the strength and innovation of the Chinese manufacturing industry and effectively learning the manufacturing technology of large cruise ships. In August 2022, before the first Chinese-made cruise ship was even completed, China officially began construction on the second large cruise ship, allowing the world's shipbuilding pioneers to experience China's learning speed. Compared to the first cruise ship, the second one is even larger, with a lengthened by 17 meters, 19 more guest rooms, and an increased gross tonnage of 6,700 tons. This represents a significant increase in size, but in terms of design, the Chinese company completed it six months ahead of schedule. To cope with increasingly strict environmental requirements around the world, the Chinese company added two sets of desulfurization towers and selective catalytic reduction systems to the second cruise ship, reducing its emissions of pollutants. These modifications demonstrate that the Chinese company has gradually digested and absorbed the technology of cruise ships and has its own design and construction philosophy. In terms of construction, unlike the conservative approach of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries of Japan, the Chinese company chose bold innovation. During the construction phase, Shanghai's Waigaokiao shipyard designed and manufactured 143 new devices specifically for manufacturing cruise ships, including highly targeted equipment such as thin plate flipping devices to address various engineering issues that arose. For thin plate structures that are prone to defamation, the Chinese company has set up a special thin plate intelligent production workshop using the latest laser cutting and laser welding technology for processing to minimize defamation. In addition, Waiga Kiao Shipyard has also introduced the latest segmented construction and pre-outfitting technologies in cruise ship construction. Some compartments outfitting work is completed outside the dock before being hoisted onto the ship's body for installation. This greatly reduces construction work in confined spaces and improves efficiency. In addition, in order to meet the needs of Chinese passengers, the cruise company has extensively used Chinese-style decoration inside the cruise ship, saving a lot of money and construction time for Chinese shipyards. Compared with Japan, greater market dominance in China also helps yards complete projects at a more comfortable pace. According to Waigakiao Shipyard's plan, by 2025, the localization rate of domestically produced cruise ships will reach 50%. By 2030, the localization rate of domestically produced cruise ships is expected to exceed 80%. At that time, China will be able to master all the technology and industrial chain of large cruise ships.